Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss geeks for geeks problems of today. And today's problem is hands of states and it is a medium level problem. So if by the end of this video, you feel that this video was helpful for you, do consider dropping a like on this video and also share your thoughts in the comments, what you felt about today's problem or any general thing you would like to share, you can write it down in the comments because your engagement with this particular video will really help the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. Right. So let us quickly start with the problem discussion. So this particular problem says that we have been given some uh, cards. Right. So each of the cards has some value. So let's say uh, the values are 1, 2, 3, 6, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. Right. The cards will be like this. Now we have to form groups of size 3. Right. So the condition on the group is that each group should have consecutive elements, three consecutive elements. So for example, if I have uh, 1, 2, 3, it is, uh, it is a valid group. Then I can have 2, 3, 4, it is a valid group. Then I can have 6, 7 and 8. So it is a valid group. Right. So obviously you would want to take all the characters. The thing is we will be taking all the uh, values from the whole hand and we have to form exactly n by 3, n by group size groups. Right. So n by 3, in this case, there will be three groups formed. But the thing is, every group should have uh, uh, like consecutive elements and the, the, size, the size of the group will be equal to group size. Right. So let me just also explain it uh, in a better way here. For example, there were nine elements and the group size is three. Right. So if uh, we have some elements like this, right. So this will be one valid group because it, it is of size three and there are three consecutive elements. This will be one valid group because there are three elements and all of them are consecutive and this will be a valid group. Now let's say there were some uh, new elements 10, 11 and 15. This cannot form a group. This cannot form a group because these three elements are not consecutive. Right. So in that case, what we'll do is we'll have to return false because uh, we cannot use all the cards to form valid groups. Right. So a, like each of the groups should be valid even if one of them is val not valid, we'll have to return false. So this problem like is just a simple implementation problem and uh, you will need to use some kind of a map or like you can also use multiset. I use multiset to do this particular problem. You can also use map. So what we essentially have to do is you just have to observe one thing. So uh, let's say there, were, there are some elements. This is the smallest element that I've taken and let's say this is the biggest element in my array that has been given to us. Right. So if you take any element from middle, right, there might be a chance there might be a chance that this particular element is present in the between, right? Is uh, is like uh, is present in the middle of some group, right? What do I mean by this? If you take any element from middle, uh, let's say that all the elements are in sorted order. So if you take any element from the middle, there is a fair chance that this uh, element, let's say group groups were of size four, that this element were, was somewhere in between, right? It can be the second element or the third element, right? There is a fair chance of it. So if it is a second element, then to find the other consecutive elements for this particular element, you might have to look backwards and you might also have to look forwards, right? So we are not sure how many uh, steps we, we should move backwards and how many steps we should move forward. So it is always better to take a corner element, right? Why? Because once we know the corner element, for example, we know the corner element as the smallest element. So if I know the smallest element, I can form the other elements like S plus 1, S plus 2 and S plus 3. Right. If I know the greatest element, let's say ending, then the other elements will be ending minus 1, ending minus 2, ending minus 3. So you can like choose to either take the smallest element and go by this particular method or you can either choose to take the bigger ele biggest element and go by this particular method. Right. So let's say you started, uh, like you chose the smallest element first. Right. So you chose the smallest element as 1. Now you can just write all the other elements like this and you can check whether all of these elements are present in the data structure or not. If they are present, you can decrement their frequency by one, right? Once you have removed or you have decremented the frequency of all of these elements by one, the next, if, if there is, if there was one more one, now this particular one will be exposed and you have, will have to do the same thing again. But let's say, let's say one was not present here. There was some other element. Let's say, uh, seven was here, right? So after you have removed two, three and four, all of these elements will be removed. And let's say the only next element was 7. So now you will start the search for 7, 7, 8, 9, 9. Right. Again, you will decrement the frequency of all of these elements by 1. And you will check what is the next element or the next smallest element that is present. And you will keep on doing this until the data structure becomes empty. Right. So this will be our approach. And now, now let me quickly summarize this. 
So basically, you will have to form groups such that they have consecutive elements, right? So I discussed why it is not reasonable to take any element from middle in the sorted order. Right? If, the, if the elements are arranged in sorted order, it is not reasonable to take some element from the middle. Why? Because it might be a part of a group where it has a middle position. Middle position means not one of the corner positions, right? If it has one of the middle positions, you might have to travel some steps to the back like this. You will have to go backwards or you might also have to go forwards and we are not sure how many steps we have to go. But if we have the information of the corner element, if you have the information of the corner element, we can find all the consecutive elements like this. If the if you have the smallest element, we'll do s s plus one s plus two s plus three. If you have the biggest element, we'll do e e minus one e minus two e minus three. Right. So it's your, totally your choice what element you want to take, and you can find all the other elements uh, related to it. Now, once you have found that these are the elements that I have in my current group, what you can do is you can decrement their frequency by one in the data structure. Once you have decremented their frequency by one. Now you can apply the same logic again since these elements, these elements will be like removed by one, right? Their frequency will decrement by one. You can apply the same logic to the remaining data structure and again find the smallest or the greatest element, right? Which one you want to choose? It's totally up to you. Both of them will work uh, like uh, totally uh, correct, right? So you can use a either a map for this particular operation or you can use a uh, like a multi set kind of thing, right? And I'll be using multiset, so you will you're going to see the, see the implementation of multiset, and I'll also explain how you can implement using map. So what I've done is I've created a multiset, and uh, I'm inserting all the values that were given to us in the multiset. So while the size of the multiset is not zero, I'm just uh, taking the start element, right? So I'm just taking the ms dot begin is the pointer, and I'm taking like uh, dereferencing the pointer to get the value. Now I'm just running a loop from i zero. In less than group size because the values will be like this is the first item item right so the next value will be the first value will be item plus zero then item plus one then item plus two then item plus three right so this is what is happening in this loop item plus i is the next element that i want to find now if the frequency of that item in my multi set is zero right then i can just directly return zero because there is one not valid there. otherwise i'll just decrement its frequency by one so i'm erasing that particular element and if I just erase item plus one, then it will uh, like remove all the occurrences of item plus one. So what I have to do is I have to first find item plus one, right? It will return me a pointer to that particular item. And then I have to erase it. If I just directly write, so, so let me just also show you. If I just directly write ms dot erase item plus one. So this won't work. Why? Why this won't work? Because it will uh, like remove all the occurrences of item plus one from the multi set, and that is not why what I want, right? So first I'll have to find that particular uh, element, and it will return me a single pointer, and then I can remove that pointer from my multi set. So like this is something that you have to take care of. Again, I can just return one, right? So you can also implement the same thing using a map, and the only thing that you need to take care of is whenever the frequency of any particular element becomes zero, please remove that particular element from the map. Because uh, like if you apply the same condition while mp dot size, while the size of map is greater than zero, right? So once the frequency of an element becomes zero, then it will still remain in the map, right? So the, the, the size of the map will never become zero. So once the frequency of the element has become zero, please uh, like remove it from the map. Otherwise your code will uh, not work and it will be stuck in an infinite loop, right? So let me just show you that this code works and it is correct. So I'm just submitting this particular code. And yeah, it passes all the test cases. And uh, this was the solution to, today, to today's problem of the day. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's always free, of course, and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting. And uh, I already see that a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. If you are one of them, then again, consider subscribing to this channel. And uh, share the channel with your friends. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.